Transgenders in the air, and not just in the Western media, right across the globe from India to Kenya to Venezuela, transgender people are coming out and calling for their basic human rights. It feels like a social revolution in the making, a bit like the eruption of lesbian and gay rights a few decades ago. And people do seem a bit more open to the idea that gender isn't just about male or female, just about what's written on your birth certificate. That gender, like sexuality, might be a bit more complex and diverse than that. And that all people, including children, have a right to express their gender in the way that seems most authentic to them. But if you look at the statistics, they paint a truly shocking picture of prejudice, discrimination and violence against transgender and intersex people. Did you know, for example, that in the US, 70% of LGBT people who are targets of violence are transgender women of colour? Or that trans people are far more likely to be victims of homicide? And that in Brazil, a transgender person is murdered every three days? Sometimes the state itself is committing grave human rights abuses. In around 20 countries in Europe, if you want to change your gender identity, you are forced to have your reproductive organs surgically removed before new documents can be issued. This is even though coerced sterilization counts as torture under the UN Convention. And in many Western countries still, you have to accept a diagnosis of mental illness before you can receive treatment for gender reassignment. Prejudice operates at many levels. Often it starts in the family, when children or teenagers who don't conform to gender conventions are seen to bring shame on the family and are rejected and forced to leave home. Often trans children are bullied at school. This sets in motion a cycle of disadvantage as education is disrupted, employment prospects plummet and life on the streets, often doing sex work, is the only option with all the risks of violence and HIV infection that goes with it. Even in comparatively rich countries, like the US, trans people are twice as likely to be unemployed and four times as likely to live in poverty. Imagine then what the situation is for people living in countries like Uganda, where the stigma is so strong that trans people are often publicly humiliated, ostracized from their communities, raped and imprisoned. Little wonder then that in some parts of the world, your life expectancy if you are trans is about half the national average and globally the suicide rate is around 50 times higher. But although most states in the world still discriminate against trans people in very fundamental ways, transgender activists and their allies have won some important victories in recent years. The country that now leads the world in securing transgender rights is Argentina, which in 2012 passed a pioneering gender law that not only protects trans people from all kinds of discrimination, but also allows them to self-identify without need of a medical diagnosis and to get the health care they need. This law has inspired changes in other countries, like Ireland, Denmark, Malta and New Zealand. It's also helped to kick off parliamentary discussions which are currently taking place in Britain and in Brazil. So there are some good models for change out there and a real potential to shift those fixed ideas about gender that are doing so much harm. To create a kinder, more open and inclusive world that respects and recognises transgender people as citizens with equal human rights.